What's up, Lynn? Hi. What's up? Thank you very much. For, I'm I'm fine. I got a question for you. All right, bring it. Um, is therapy the right next step for my son who experienced uh, anxiety and fear after a serious car uh, accident that he witnessed? Oh man, what happened? Um, I think I think what makes it kind of unique is um, my husband, his dad, and two siblings were in the car uh, that he got to watch the accident happen in front of our home. Oh, wow. So um, it's not something uh, that we can just walk away from and not be in that area. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's something you see daily. Um, and uh, it, it was a, a, a serious uh, car accident talking to, uh, I mean, I watched it too, so I already knew that. But um, a few months later, I talked to other people that were behind the car cars there was two cars that hit them actually um and they said it was the the most um uh what's the word they used the most <laughs> traumatic accident that they had ever witnessed as mm-hmm. semi drivers and and motorists um there was two of them that we spoke with so is everybody, is everybody okay they are it was one of those things that when we walked out of the hospital we just didn't know how that was even possible what the semi driver thought that um the coroner was coming and that's why they had the road the road cut off for oh, so long man. um so it was definitely um i i understand exactly how he feels because um that's just i i got to watch it too with him but <laughs> i don't know how to take care of a kid um that no longer wants to get in a car and sure. no longer wants to um it, it just noises um, on that road, you know, bother him too. Sure. So that's that's where we're having a struggle with. How old is he? He is nine. nine. He's nine. Yeah, I'm a bouncy boy. <laughs> How's mom doing? Um, I actually, um, after the accident, I uh, sat and I just uh, videotaped a statement just because I thought that might help getting it out of my head. Um, and seeing it because uh, I don't know, or just imprint it further. Just, yeah, I guess so. Um, and then, um, we did have to seek counsel to make sure all the bills got the medical bills got taken care of it. And because it had multiple vehicles that were involved, um, we were suggested just to get someone to, to make sure all everything got paid correctly. Hey, Lynn. Um, yes. How's mom? Uh, I, I, I am I am okay. <laughs> hey Lynn, how's mom? It's terrible. It's terrible. Okay. Um, hold on, we, hold on, hold yeah. on. Stop. <laughs> you went straight to work, and then you went straight to funny, and then you went straight to caretaker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about any of those hats. Take all those hats off and just sit for a second. How's mom? You almost um, lost two of your kids and your husband in one fell swoop, and you almost yes. watched it. Yep. How's Lynn? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm better than I was. That's not an answer. How's Lynn? I'm, I'm probably not good. <laughs> okay. the, the more yeah. you run from that, the harder things are going to be. Yeah. Sit in that for a second. How old are your other kids? Um, the two in the car were, are um, a le- a ten, 10 at the time, 10 and 7. Okay. And then a four-year-old also got to... Not witness as much, but um, she got to see the helicopter that came and mm-hmm. everything else. So I can think of no more terrifying incident in the entire world than what you saw, and what yeah. you what you assumed happened. Yeah, and there's no more terrifying thing than having to a be a caretaker to two small kids. At the same time, do they let you fly in the helicopter? Or do you have to drive? So actually the helicopter, um, they could only take one person okay. and they took one of the drivers. Um, and, um, unfortunately I had already been, um, in the EMT, uh, going to the next hospital and we just okay. decided to just take, um, our son was the one that, um, they wanted to, to airlift. Okay. Um, I think seeing it all, um, from, uh, um, I have a tracking app on my husband just to see where he's at. So I don't have to call him if he's driving. And I, uh, we were trying to get ready for dinner and I, I knew he was four or five minutes away. So we all were sitting on top of the hill waiting for them to get there to have, have dinner. And, um, 
the first noise, I remember just looking up and, and <clears throat> seeing, seeing it all. And, um, no, don't blow by it. What'd you see? Um, I, I saw the first, I, I heard and saw the first hit mm-hmm. and then, um, the car behind him then just slammed into our van and I watched it just do like a, a 360 all the way around. And at the 360, that's when I, that second hit, I knew that was my, my kids. Um, so I ran down. There's an instance, there's an instance, like it, it detaches real quick, doesn't it? Yeah. It almost looks cartoonish, right? It, yes. And it just plays over and over. Um, I, I knew that I had gotten to them. Like, I can tell you as soon as the car stopped rolling back and like it, it teetered back and forth, almost going into a ditch. Um, and I remember, I mean, I, I booked it pretty good down that hill. Um, I can tell you exactly the words I, I yelled. And, um, I had to wait for that car tire to, to stop on the ground so I could run across the road and open the door. And I know you're not supposed to, to, to touch people when they're in car accidents, but, um, <laughs> Hey, you tell a mama with two kids and a husband in a car. I know. <laughs> I know that. And I, um, um, I didn't, I cannot imagine if they had passed away. I just, that's, um, Hey Lynn, I want you to sit on that for a second. Exhale. You're not breathing. <laughs> I can hear you're not breathing. Uh, yeah. Exhale. <sighs> and I want you to hear me real clear. They could have, but they didn't. Yep. Right? Yep. You got to see something that most people never get to see, and that's a, a, a real clear look over the cliff, but you didn't fall. Yep. All right? Mm-hmm. And, every, and this is going to sound bananas. But your body has a vested interest in that never happening again. So it replays it and it replays it and it replays it and it replays it. Mm-hmm. And you have to choose to not replay it. And that sounds yep. wild. It comes into your mind like a lightning bolt in weird moments, right? Yes. Yes. And then yes. It, it feels like you are dishonoring your two kids. It feels like you're dishonoring your husband. It feels like you're dishonoring the other driver when you try to blow past it. You're not. You're healing. So here's the the old, I won't go through all the drama, but when that thought pops into your head, you have a choice. Am I going to meditate on it and go down the rabbit hole and my heart rate's going to spike up and cortisol and adrenaline is going to dump it in my body? I'm going to go right back into sprinting down that hill physiologically, or I'm going to consciously exhale and I'm going to close my eyes real tight and I'm going to remember all five of us walking out of the hospital. You get to pick which one of those photos you meditate on. One of them will bring you healing and peace over time and the other one's going to make you nuts. It could have, but it didn't. Okay? Okay. And uh, Mm -hmm. Brene Brown calls it dress rehearsing tragedy. Your body thinks if we just keep rehearsing this over and over, the next time we'll be more prepared. You won't. You won't. Now, why am I talking to you? Because your nine-year-old is absorbing every molecule of this. Yes. Okay. I I I think therapy would be fine. With a nine-year-old, they're going to play. They're probably going to give him some cars in a couple of sessions after they develop some rapport and they're going to play with the cars and he's going to kind of drive it. Uh, no pun intended. He's going to drive the session. Probably what I would do in my house before that, if I'm the dad, I would take that nine-year-old and I would walk that nine-year-old really slowly down the hill and we would go walk around out there on the road and we would talk about it being scary. But what you'd be doing is you'd be bringing your child from that terrifying moment into the present. We're okay now. And kids are amazingly resilient if and only if they have present adults with them. Mm -hmm. And you being really open about how scary that was. 
Here's an example, a totally um, benign example in comparison, okay? Mm-hmm. I speak for a living. I have for 20 years. Um, like even when I was working in, in universities, I was always speaking on some stage somewhere. And the biggest one I ever did, I walked into a room that I thought was just going to be a parent teacher thing. And it ended up being, a, like I walked through the doors and it was a packed, like miniature Coliseum. It was about 5,000 people in there. And my son was with me. And it just, it was like one of those weird, I thought it was going to be about a thousand people. And it was like, whoa. And I sat down and I saw him sitting next to me and his eyes were huge. And I said, hey, let me see your hand. And I took his hand and I unbuttoned my shirt and I put it inside my shirt and put it on my chest. He could feel my heart beating out of my chest because I was so nervous. And he, I said, do you feel that? And he goes, yeah. And I said, your daddy's real nervous. And he said, you? And I go, I'm so nervous. Look at all these people. And instead of trying to act tough, I brought him right into the middle of it because then he got to see me button my shirt. When they called my name, I winked at him and I got up on stage and did my thing. And most of us want to take that discomfort moment, that fear moment from our kids instead of bringing it in with us, bringing them, bringing them along with us. Mm. I think it would be cool for you to go for a walk holding your nine-year-old's hand and walk down that hill towards that site. Yeah, we've kind of, I guess that's the part we have not. Um, and then if you're, if you're nine year old, then like you're some people, it's, it's a rare percentage. I don't have a percentage off the top of my head, but they will shut down. They'll go catatonic. They will just implode or scream and yell and refuse. Right. Then if those moments happen, yeah, of course, take them to a counselor. No question about it. Or yeah, ours is more of just, um, hey, let's go 30 minutes somewhere to you know, a friend's house. And he just will, he is um, having nothing to do with that. Yeah. Um, and I, <sighs> his body's working perfectly. Okay. Because he knows okay. that y'all are scared too. And this happened like almost, uh, Ten months ago, okay. So that's where I. That's where I felt like I. That you're I still right there on the time. surface with you, Lynn. I, I know it is. I yeah, I know. Uh, I guess I, I assumed um, because he seems to always kind of just brush things off that this might be a brushing off incident, <laughs> and I. Uh, that's I incredible. Know, but I really did think like. Out of all my kids, he's probably going to forget about this quite quickly. He'll he never forget it. This is imprinted no, in not. his nervous system. Yeah. But most importantly, so, what's imprinted is beyond the incident, he knows that he plays some role in making sure mom's okay. And I don't want him to do that. I know. I know you don't. And it's <laughs> and, not your fault. The, yeah. But you have to decide to heal. And dad has to decide to head right back into the storm with nine-year-old. And preferably with other other brother and sisters, if it's okay with them. The thing is, is those guys in the car have no clue what went on. Not one. I mean, there's a huge blessing. I would hate for that. They just hopped in the car and came home from the hospital, like, (laughs) and I just... Because they were a part of it. there There was an experiencing that happened, and they were with dad. Yeah. And dad walked in and dad walked out. Yep. There's a physiological component to this, not a sight and then a just all talk, 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 talk. That's why that, that, that experiencing is important. Which we have not done that. I've waited for uh, a conversation if it needed to happen. I don't know that there's a, um, like, you can't, you can't conversate with a nine-year-old. You have to experience Okay. But you got to do it too. Have you held hands with your husband and y'all walked down that hill together? No, do no, that. I'm not going to. No. I mean, we live there, so we see it all the time. No matter what um, you see, you got to experience it. Yeah. Nope. Do that together. Um, and then look him in the eye and grab him by the face and say, if you ever leave me, if you ever die, I'm going to kill you to death. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no. Um, Boy, it does change a person, though. Yeah, it does. It makes um, things real precious. But it can also yeah. make you real hard, too. Yep. 
Yeah. You can close your fist real tight try to solve everything, or you can open real loose and just say, thank God for another day. Yes. And one, of, one of those is going to lead you to coronary disease and the other one's going to lead you to be one of the funnest people around. Yeah. You're a good mom. Thank you. And you're, okay, I think, you're lucky. Yes. I don't know. Lucky is all my word. So thankful. Okay, get a dog named Lucky. Just own it. <laughs> own it. Right? Uh, thank you very much. So here's, no, your, here's I, your homework. Tonight. Okay. Maybe, not, maybe tonight's too soon. Or tomorrow. Ooh. You want to get real weird? Will you get weird with me? Sure. All right. You're going to write him a letter. Your husband. And y'all oh, are going to hold husband. hands, and you're going to go down that hill, and you're going to walk to the site, and you're going to read it to him. Okay? Mm, yep. And I want you all just to sit there in that moment and experience it together. He's going to say, what the crap? That's 10 months ago. We're good. And I want you to finally have the courage to say, I'm still not good. And he's going to say something like, what the crap? I was in the wreck. Why are you, am I supposed to take care of you? And you said, yes, you are. <laughs> and then the next homework assignment is he needs to walk his son down that hill together. Talk about how scary it was. But never let his hand go. So that he can feel that it was scary and dad's okay. Bad things can happen and they usually don't. Okay? Yep. And then you take him down. Okay. Okay. I can do that. I know you can. I can do that. I know you can. And parents, man, we think sometimes that hiding our emotions, like you said, it's just going to go away. It's not. Kids just learn that, that if things get real scary, we just, we shove them down. And if mom's not okay, well, let's figure out how to solve that. And I know you don't want that. Very few parents want that. <sighs> Kids are incredibly resilient if they've got present, honest parents who are st- uh, as Dr. Kennedy says, sturdy, who will go with you, who will be there. Kids can go through a lot. They just can't go through it alone. Man, I'm glad everybody's okay. Lynn, I'm so glad everybody's okay. We've done a lot of work over 10 months. Now let's get to the healing part. And yes, if things don't improve pretty significantly. There ends up being a phobia on a car. Take him to a counselor. It's great. A lot of amazing, amazing child counselors out there. Thanks for the call, Lynn.